Oui. Spider No Way Home came out this last weekend, and I was able to see it twice, so I feel like now I could actually discuss this movie. Originally, I wrote an entire script for this video, but I just said, you know what, I'm just gonna wing it. I have a whole bunch of points I want to go through, and yeah, just hope for the best. And also, it's kind of impossible to talk about this movie without spoilers, so you have been warned, go see No Way Home. Trust me, you won't regret it. So, is Spider-Man No Way Home actually good? Yes, it is actually really good. I think the best way to describe this movie is that it's everything I wanted it to be and more. That's it's kind of the best way to describe it. And also, I feel like this movie definitely did the impossible because it had five villains, three Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, an origin story for Tom Spider-Man, an entire multiverse subplot, as well as Peter Parker's identity getting a revealed subplot all in one movie. And somehow they made it work. They tried this twice already and it didn't work, but this one worked. And it just amazes me how well it actually worked. This movie really definitely screws with you emotionally. At one moment, you'll be the happiest person alive. Next moment, you'll be very depressed because something sad is happening. The first part was definitely more lighthearted. It, there was some serious moments in it, but it was mostly lighthearted, showing how Peter and his friends and family are dealing with the fact that his identity has been revealed and he is claimed to be a murderer. But you can definitely tell when it gets serious, you know, his spider sense is going off and he senses Green Goblin being a bad guy and having one of the most brutal fights for a Spider-Man movie ever and i just want to quickly talk about how brutal the fights were between spider-man and green goblin which I, I will get to green goblin in a little bit their fights were so brutal and you could definitely tell when jamie fox says that william defoe's fights are personal it really felt like that they were not holding back and i absolutely love that all the villains were good even though some didn't get as much screen time like the lizard or sandman but definitely the three are electro doc ock and green goblin definitely take the spot with green goblin taking the top spot as the best villain of this entire movie he was definitely scarier more terrifying i personally believe he was better in this movie than he was in the original 2002 Tobey Maguire spider-man i just think he was a fantastic villain in this movie but also doc ock was good as well as well as electro which got a little bit of redemption arc and I kind of like that. And I really like the fact that this definitely feels more of an origin story for Tom Holland Spider-Man with him finally becoming Spider-Man at the end because the main criticism that people have with his version of Spider-Man is that he doesn't really feel like Spider-Man, which I feel like that was the point. The point was that he isn't Spider-Man yet. And this movie definitely makes him become Spider-Man with Aunt May dying in this movie, which I think was actually kind of a good choice. It was very sad, but I also think it was a good choice because we didn't see Uncle Ben die in the MCU. We know he did exist and we know he did die in the MCU. They just never showed it, but they did talk about it a little bit. But that wasn't his becoming Spider-Man moment. That was, it was just something that happened. And having Aunt May be that Uncle Ben moment, I think was just a good choice. I like the fact that Toby and Andrew are back better than ever. I love each of their portrayals as Spider-Man. And I just love the fact they didn't really change the characters for this movie. They feel like the characters from those universes and i just love that and i love the fact that toby and andrew kind of help make tom holland become spider-man and i just think that's kind of nice to see to see andrew garfield save mj as kind of a redemption for him not saving gwen i think that was really nice this will be talked about for years years to come i mean this is it's it's actually it's actually sick and twisted. You could tell the people who made this movie absolutely love Spider-Man and love every single version of Spider-Man because they had all these little details, all these little references. You could tell the people who made this are fans. And I personally cannot wait to see the future of Tom Holland Spider-Man in the MCU since we are getting a brand new trilogy. Spider-Man 4 is confirmed. And I just want to quickly mention that suit at the end is so good. It is one of the best Spider-Man suits we've ever seen. And we've barely seen it. I love the fact that the front logo as well as the back are both inspired by Toby and Andrew. Like the front, you could definitely see the Toby inspired logo in the back. You could definitely see the Andrew. Well, the first time I saw it, I thought that was the case, but rewatching it, definitely that was the case. And I just love that. I I just can't stop loving this movie. This movie is such a good movie. It is definitely one of the best Spider-Man movies. I think it is the best Spider-Man movie, in my opinion. I just love this movie. But you also cannot ignore the previous Spider-Man movies because those movies had the walk to make this movie run. If you haven't seen No Way Home, and for some reason you did watch this entire spoiler review go see no way home if you already seen it see it again anyway that's it see you guys later bye